Hey, everybody. Welcome on into this edition of WarChant TV. I'm Aslan Hajavandi, joined by Gene Williams, founder and administrator of WarChant.com, senior writer Corey Clark below him, and then Iris Schofell, managing editor of the ultimate symbol sports source, WarChant.com. If you're not a member, use the promo code WarChant30. It gets you 30 free days of access to the website. Lots of stuff going on over on the Tribal Council, our premium uh, forum. And it was uh, thanks to our own Gene Williams, who kind of helped spur me and Corey on the podcast the other day, gave us something to talk about. And that's sort of the, uh, the growing momentum from one of the conferences in the nation. And surprise, surprise, is the SEC talking about getting back to football. Greg Sankey went on radio, I think it was Friday, and talked about uh, if all the conferences on board, you know, there's still some leeway for them to go ahead. Arkansas University themselves on Monday, I think, announced that they're going to open their football facility on July so that their team can start practicing, even though they might not have uh, their housing dormitories open. So is there anything, Ira, about the SEC that's uniquely positioned to allow themselves to kind of take this stance uh, versus the ACC and other conferences around the country? Well, it just means more, Aslan. I mean, I think that's uh, that's what they've really – you up. They've hammered home. Um, you know, I think – and I, I don't know if you saw it later, the Arkansas – um, AD, I guess, or president, was it the AD or the president? Yeah, you're right. AD. I think it, was, it was the AD, the yeah, AD. 100 year check. That's my fault. He, uh, AD. he ended up walking it back some later and said that, you know, that's all aspirational. That's what we hope to do. It's not set in stone yet. Um, but I think, you know, the SECs, we all know that they're going to play if they can play. If there's any way possible that they can play, they're going to play. And I think the ACC is in the same boat. I mean, the reality is, you know, the, the, the Southeast hasn't been hit as hard. Uh, as some other parts, I mean, other than South Florida, the Southeast hasn't been hit quite as hard as some other areas in the country. Um, college football, this is the, kind of the heartland for college football. Um, so it makes sense that the priority here, and with all these athletic departments and how much money they make from college football, you know, 80,000, 90,000 seat stadiums, everybody down here wants to play. Um, but I think what's interesting, and we discuss uh, on the site in the, uh, the piece that's the accompanying piece with this, is you know, it may not be cut and dry. I mean, I think uh, two weeks ago, maybe we, we probably all felt like college football would act in unison, kind of like the NFL or major league baseball. And that there would be some sort of consensus and everybody would start on the same date or play on the same date. Now, I think from what the SEC is saying, and I think if you look at it realistically, what's the challenges in different parts of the country, this may be a situation where one, two, three, who knows how many conferences play or, um, the conferences may have to – they may have to divide up themselves. I mean, we don't know for sure that every team in the ACC is going to be able to play. So um, I think there's more questions than answers, but I think the SEC just did what the SEC does and said, you know, hey, we're going to play football. Gene, I don't know how many Florida State fans are ever going to really feel at home with the ACC, but when you heard the SEC talk about that last week when you posted over on the Tribal Council, Greg Sankey, the commissioner, saying that uh, they didn't necessarily need all the conferences to be on board, I mean – I guess, what was your first reaction and, and how do you size things up from the ACC's perspective uh, if they're on the same sort of page in the plane as, uh, as the SEC? You know, as I already pointed out, the, the ACC will look probably – I don't think the ACC is really a proactive conference. So they have a reactive conference, so I think it's a good sign for them to play if the SEC is going ahead and everybody's playing. But I think it's, it's going to come down to, let's say, the SEC does play. I think there's a decent chance that – one or more of the schools may not be comfortable. They may not feel it's safe enough to go ahead and proceed with the season. So then you get an unusual situation in the ACC where, let's say, 11 teams can play. I assume there's no reason why Swafford would say, well, then we're going to scrap it. I assume they'd still go ahead and play a schedule, which is, that's where it gets interesting. How do you do the scheduling? I would imagine, I would hope the schools are in communication right now. And you're talking, let's just hypothetically, the, the Boston College AD, your president, saying, look, it's a little sketchy. We're not sure. So if I'm the ACC, John Swafford, I'm working these other schools, so let's start working out schedules now in case this school, this school, this school can't play. So when we get the go-ahead, assuming we do, we're able to schedule it out. So, I mean, I think that that's not an unrealistic possibility that you could have a reduced schedule even within the conference because some of these schools can't play. So maybe you replace a Boston College with, let's say, with Florida State, I don't know if their schedule maybe a Georgia Tech who's regionally a little bit closer by. And that may be another thing. Maybe these schools are going to want to keep their schedules a little bit more regionalized. So maybe these, you know, Florida State traveling to Syracuse, those type of games, maybe those will be out. I mean, there's so many different scenarios where this could go right now. I feel like this is the year – don't you think this is the year you make a run at Notre Dame and say, hey, baby, if you're going to be in the ACC, we're going to have – because Notre Dame, you know, there might be some – I mean, Notre Dame does play that national schedule. They get Army-Navy. 
USC, whoever else, Boston College maybe, who knows who's on Notre Dame's schedule. What if seven of their schools decide we're not playing and they're going to come begging the ACC for games? And you're like, okay, sure, we'll play. We'll give you a nine-game schedule, but you're a full member now. Yeah, but, you know, the one thing – the one – issue there is I think Notre Dame is probably one of the few schools that probably isn't as worried financially. Yeah. They could probably the, take the hit. Yeah, they, can, right. they can get by without a season of football and still no, be they'd have a, they'd have a lot of angry fans being like, wait, the whole, for sure. All these schools there's, playing the conference we could be in is playing, but you're not playing. There's, there's plenty of schools in Indiana and Illinois. They could play a bunch of small schools. They're well, fans yeah, that's fill up the place. And that's one of the other things that, you know, came out uh, on Monday was, a lot of the independent schools, because, you know, last week we started hearing that the conferences were looking at options of maybe not playing all their non-conference games, start later and just play a conference schedule. Well, now all these independent schools are left out in the dust. And so, uh, well, not the dust. I don't know where they're left out, but they're left out without games. So a bunch of the independent schools now are discussing maybe playing each other and kind of having like contingency plans in case the conferences drop them. Um, it's just such a crazy time. But I think at the end of the day, we're going to see everybody's out for themselves. Uh, yeah, and when Gene brought up the whole thing about, like, you know, um, some schools might not want to play, I think that's, that's where you as a, as a conference, as John Swafford, has to say, okay, well, you don't have to play, but we're having a season. We're having a season. There are, there are you know, what's going on in Boston isn't this, the reality of what's going on in Tallahassee. It's just not. And so you can't act like it is. I know it's a whole conference, but – you know, I saw something on Twitter about, um, you know, if Major League Baseball starts back, it, what, what happens when a player tests positive for the coronavirus? Are you going to just shut down the season? No. You, that player doesn't play, but you keep going at some point, especially as we open up the country again, which we are. We'll see what happens in two months. But the country is getting reopened again. Sports will have to be reopened too. And there's just going to be some calculated risk that goes with it. And I don't mean – I'm not saying necessarily that means 80,000 fans in, in stadiums. But, you know, I, I, I can't understand how in, sep- like, the middle of September, Arkansas and Alabama are playing, but Florida State's at home not playing. Because John Swafford was worried about Boston and Pittsburgh. You know, I, I mean, I hate to put this on you, but I, I just – you know, I, I think Gene made a good point in terms of a contingency. If Florida State has to drop a Boston College or a Syracuse, which is in their division – you can maybe swap in Georgia Tech that was a bit of a historic rival and it's a, a pretty easy sort of a jaunt to get to Atlanta. Uh, but I, I mean, could you even imagine, could you even postulate a, a guess at what they would do if, if certain teams decided not to play? I mean, do you, do, does Boston College still get ACC network money and, and, and how would all that work out? Or is that just even, it's way above even your pay grade, my friend. Yeah, I mean that's it's crazy. I you know I don't even know. I don't even know if the university presidents and the ads know. It may be something that the that the council of presidents at the ACC might have to decide how they would handle something like that. You know, it's funny. You know, so much of it comes down to leverage. You know, in the ACC tournament, it was basically Duke calling and saying we're not going to play. So if you're going to play the ACC tournament, we are not going to play. And that was enough to get the ACC to pull the plug. I mean, it also – all these other conferences were doing it as well. But, but when Duke said they were not going to take the, the floor, that spoke loudly. Football is going to be a little bit different. You know, the schools that we're talking about that are mo- most likely going to have issues in the metropolitan areas are not the football powers. So I don't know that any of them really have a whole lot of juice um, in terms of making a decision for the whole conference. The other thing is I just can't – we all know what's happened and it, it seems crass to talk about competition from a conference standpoint during a situation like this, because there is safety, you know, and their health concerns, but could you imagine, because one of the reports over the weekend was the, the article that Gene list posted on the site was a scenario where the SEC could be the only college conference to play. <laughs> could you imagine that if you, the ACC can't let that happen? No conference can let that happen. They would be – it would be like – it would be like turning back the clock 40 or 50 years to when Notre Dame was the only team on TV and right. how they became America's college football team. The only thing would be on would be the SEC football. I mean, that you just – that can't happen. Well, All right. let me throw out a hypothetical then. Worst-case scenario, Ira, if four or five teams of the ACC say they're not going to play in Swafford, goes, well, you know what, we, we deem it not safe. We're not doing it. You're President Thrasher. You, you feel you can do it within a reasonable safety margin. 
what do you do at that point? Do you start now? Do you look at, you go, look, let's contact Central Florida. Let's contact USF. Let's contact Georgia Southern. Let's, let's get some kind of schedule going. Screw the ACC. That's a good, that's a great question. Um, you know, you almost feel like uh, then you get into TV. The big clips that would be on board with you, right? Yeah, for hundred percent. Right. I mean, uh, they would definitely be, um, yeah, I just – and that is going to be the challenge because the ACC is – you know, they're made up of different types of schools than the SEC. And what, it's one of the cool things about the ACC is that there's such a diversity of what kinds of schools are in the conference and what kind of people and, and all that. But, but in a situation like this, everybody talks about the, the need to have a czar of college sports, a czar of college football or czar of college basketball. This is where it's so obvious that there needs to be something like that because this is – it could be we could. It's almost like all of these conferences or all these programs are ships going off to sea, but in any direction they want to go because nobody knows. Um, nobody's going to want to come back to port. I mean, the schools that need this sport to be played are going to want to go, um, but there's not really a, a course that everybody's going to be following. So, but like, all the schools? SEC, the SEC is Sweden. Like they're they're so like homogenous <laughs> that they're just like, ah, eh, we'll be fine. You know, everybody else do their thing. We'll go out ourselves. But like, but all schools need the sport to go forward. Like, I can see what I what I fear, and I'm not saying I think this is going to happen. I don't think this is going to happen. Is in July, the late July, John Swafford is going to make a sweeping claim that uh, that the health and safety of our students is paramount, and we cannot go forward with the college football season. Obviously, nobody would have a problem with that sentiment. But number one, we have to have an idea what this, what this thing looks like three months from now, two months from now. But also, when he says that, he knows that at places like Florida State, places like Clemson, places like Miami, Virginia, Virginia well, Virginia Tech, you're, you're cutting dozens of scholarships. So, some sports are just done. I don't think any of us listen, talking right now think that Florida State athletics can survive intact with 20 sports if college football is not played. It might be irreparably harmed, the university. So I just don't want it to become a bureaucratic decision. You really have to have some critical thought here and understand what you're doing, what you're saying. We get that it's important. We get that safety is the most important thing. But if there's a handle on this thing, a handle, you have to, you have to do everything you can to play it. If you hide behind that, and I don't want to say hide behind, that sounds callous. It is important. But if you don't have a college football season, your, your university might not ever be the same again. You're going to have to cut. Don't think you have to cut. Employees are gone. Not just oh. members of the sports staff are gone. Teachers are gone. Librarians, Corey, librarians. And we know how, much, how important they are to Florida State. Yeah, I mean, it's already it's already even wrap your mind around the, the economic impact. I mean, from – from a, from a university standpoint and also obviously for the athletic department. Um, but also at the same time, you know, Monday afternoon, I don't know if, if, if people have seen it or not, but FSU's provost uh, sent a letter out about uh, plans for this fall. And it was not a very spirited rah-rah, we're going to have, you know, business as usual or anything close to it on campus this fall, which you've been hearing from some presidents and some provosts and some uh, even athletic directors that they're, hope, they're at least hoping – that things are going to be business as usual this fall. The, the letter that FSU sent out um, was not very uh, – in, in fact, it talked a lot about trying to have alter, alternate plans for, for distance learning and things like that. I, I don't really get that, to send that kind of message three months out, but that might give you an idea of, of kind of the direction that the university is leaning, which doesn't sound to be nearly as uh, spirited as, as probably some people would like. What, and it's, it's really difficult. The, the problem that these administrators are in, um, and there is no czar, so it feels like it's, all, it's up to the presidents and the conferences, is the calculus you have to do about the risk, the risk of, of playing games and maybe kid, you know, kids get sick, what that risk is versus the risk of not playing games. And you don't want to be callous in saying, okay, it's this many sicknesses or it's this many, uh, you know, fatalities. There, there's no number that's the right number there. But at some point, it has to get back to, you know, th there's a risk in life. And if this thing's raging out of control in August, obviously you're not going to pack stadiums. But if half the state is open already, I, I, I just, I think that, yeah, again, I keep bring, coming back to it. There, there's a risk versus reward. There's a calculus. 
and you have to do the math and there have to be real, some real critical thought of what's, what, what is it worth? You might risk people getting sick, but you know, you also might risk people's lives, livelihoods being gone forever if they don't get to keep their professor jobs. Yeah, our, our jobs, literally. Like I, there's, there's risk to be weighed on both sides. Well, you guys brought it up before, and it maybe I, I hope it doesn't come to that, but I know someone posted when this first came out, and they were talking about whether football season would happen. And, you know, I had the story, I think it was last month, going through all the sports and, you know, all the non-revenue sports and how much money they, they don't make money and how much money football funds, other than basketball and baseball, really football funds everything. And someone kind of made, I don't know if they were making it as a joke, really, you could have football, baseball, men's basketball, and then 10, 10 women's sports. I mean, it's scary to think a year from now, that might be Florida State Athletics. I mean, that might be what you have to do because that money has to, if you're going to lose 20, 30 million, whatever it's going to be with a, a program that's already lost money the last couple of years, the boosters have only so much money to go to. They can liquidate so much property and at some point it's going to end. So you, that the cost cutting has to come from some point. And that's the only thing I can even think of they could do at this point, unless you had the Spanx woman come in and write a huge check, it's not going to be there. I wanted to ask you too. I brought it up on Wake Up Board Chant with Aslan. I, I think it's uh, the inverse of what happened in the ACC tournament that we were talking about where um, Swafford, for some reason, decided to have that crazy press conference. And literally five minutes after he's done talking, all these other conferences were like, bang, bang, bang. We're not, doing, we're not dealing with that con press conference. We're canceling our tournaments. And I think the ACC uh, bowed under the pressure, which was a lot of pressure. And it was probably smart at the time because we had no idea what it was. But don't you think there's the counter to that is when the SEC shows we've got a full slate. We got nine games. We're all playing. We're not doing any non-conference games, but we're doing nine conference games. And we'll have an SEC championship game. We'll have 30% capacity in our stadiums, whatever they come up with. Won't that put pressure on all, especially the ACC, like Ira said, because it is in the mostly the same region to play these games. Won't, won't that pull it, won't there be some pressure that comes like in the inverse that that dom if that domino falls, it feels like the ACC would be like, well, heck, if the SEC is going to play, we got to play too. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it. I mean, it has to to some extent because isn't you know Clemson's AD and President uh, Thrasher and them calling up Swafford going, look, the SEC's playing. What's our plan? You know, they've come up with a plan, especially if you, under your scenario if they come up with something that makes some sense. I mean, you hope the people there came up with a good solution about how to deal with the fans, how to test the players, and how all this stuff is going to work out in a reasonable and relatively safe manner. If they come up with a good plan, then, yeah, I think those presidents are going to be on the phone with John Swafford going, here we go. The groundwork's been laid. They're doing it. We're in, com we're in competition with them. Where are we going with this? So, yeah, I do think there'll be some pressure. Will it happen maybe as quickly? Probably not as the other, but it definitely is a step in the right direction. Well, you also – and you also – you know, we have so many of these – uh, in the SEC and the ACC, we have so many of these states with multiple teams in both conferences. You know, you know, the SEC's got Florida, the ACC has Miami and Florida State. Uh, SEC's got South Carolina, the ACC has Clemson. You, you yeah. have these situations where the governors of these states aren't probably going to just sit there and let one college, one major college play in their conference while the other college sits home and doesn't, doesn't get that opportunity. And, you know, going back to this whole thing with, you know, if students on campus, if students are on campus, if they're lose, if they're living in student housing, it's not, I mean, it doesn't seem like a big leap to go to playing sports. I mean, you know, it's, you can't get any closer than roommates. Right. So mm -hmm. um, I just think it's, uh, you know, I think that's going to be the kind of the, the what, what really lets us know whether or not this is going to happen. If they're bringing kids back to live on campus, and uh, and one of these conferences playing, I think there's so much overlap that I think you're going to see the other conference playing as well. Um, except, you know, some of these outlier schools, again, that maybe in the Northeast. Do we really think, though, that, I mean, Boston hasn't been, I mean, New York City has been the epicenter of this. I mean, I, I don't recall Boston being really, you know, hammered. So, I mean, and Syracuse is upstate New York, but New York is in that whole thing, to get, the whole mess together. So I could maybe Syracuse I would kind of hedge as, as being a school that might not want to go for, but I, I would think Pitt, even though they're in the rush to help find a vaccine would, would want to play football. And I got a buddy who lives in Pittsburgh and, you know, Allegheny County's actually been pretty okay. I mean, in terms of, of, yeah. of outbreaks or anything like that. So I think maybe we're maybe misrepresenting well, the amount of, of, of 
metropolitan cities in the, in the Northeast that are, are hurting. And I mean, ultimately, how many schools do you think really would reign back? I mean, I think North Carolina, North Carolina State would want to play football. Clemson's going to want to play football. Miami, Florida State are going to want to play football. Georgia Tech's going to want to play football. I'm sure Virginia, Virginia Tech, I can't really think of, despite the reputation of the ACC of not being die hard, it means more. Uh, a lot of presidents are going to be like, yeah, we can live without it. Well, the way, the reason I look at those metropolitan areas is because I just think there, there's more likelihood of an outbreak in an area like that because you're concentrated, public transportation. I mean, there, you know, there's a lot more travel into big cities. You have a lot more people coming in. Once people start relaxing, because what we don't know, one of the things that really makes this all hard, and some new numbers came out, some new projections that were a little bit, bit frightening, um, you know, about possible uh, – surges in cases and deaths is nobody really knows what's going to happen once we relax as Corey said we kind of open things back up and we don't know is if people start letting their guard down and so now if you go into if somebody lets their guard down in Tallahassee or if they let their guard down in in, in the Winston-Salem they're they're probably not going to affect nearly as many people as if they're in, in a big city so I just think that's a big part of it and then the distance uh in terms of travel I mean, I think it's going to be a lot easier to to get a team that's already been practicing together. They're all tested to keep them in bus buses and travel from Tallahassee to, to Atlanta compared to getting in planes and go to Boston and go through airports and all that kind of stuff. So I think those are some of the reasons. I mean, last thing, I guess, just a head count. We'll start with you, Gene. I mean, if, if three schools in the ACC say they're not comfortable playing football, you, you still think Florida State should go ahead if, if Tallahassee feels their calculus is, is, you know, up to, up to snuff to, to allow them to play safely. Yeah. As long as, as long as Florida state from, you know, the board of trustees, president Thrasher, they're all satisfied that they can go ahead and play a season within reasonable standards. I mean, you can't be a hundred percent safe. I don't know. No matter what situation we're going to be in when the season starts, if you can't be a hundred percent, but reasonably safe under the situation, Absolutely. There is no reason not to just because, you know, hypothetically Syracuse, Pitt and BC say they're not playing. There's no reason to shut everything down. So, yeah, I think and I think that's almost the likelihood that there may be one or two, as Corey called them, outlier schools. But that should not throw the whole conference under the bus. You still if you can do it reasonably and relatively safely. Yes, absolutely. You should have a season. Corey, no hesitation with that. Go ahead and play. If if, if ta- Clemson and Tallahassee are good, if, if, if you're a program in the ACC and you feel good about your your program and your testing and, and things of that nature, go ahead and play, even if everybody else, the rest of the, uh, all 14 aren't in. Yeah. And to go back to a point you brought up, or maybe Gene brought up, man, I, I know I'm, I guess I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the friendliest person in the world, but if you choose not to play, you don't get the TV money. Like, you know, I don't know that Boston college gets a, a 28 million cut for a football season that they didn't put, they didn't participate in. You know, I, I, and I know that's a, that's, you know, maybe give them some of it, but you know, we'll, okay. We'll split the pot eight ways or 10 ways instead of 14 or 15 ways. I, I don't know. I, that, that's kind of where I am right now, but yes, I do think, um, you know, obviously admittedly, that's, that's a really harsh angle to take. Well, especially if there's no gate. I mean, we're not as the, the gate. That's where all the money is. Be, yeah. It, it, well, it's going to be none of it. Yeah. And if you're assuming the risk, if you're the school assuming the risk, then you should get the money. If you're not assuming the risk, that's fine. But we're trying to support I me mean, where Florida State is trying to support all these other school, other all these other sports that we have. So no, I, I do think though, if three or four schools say no, um, I, I still think you should play and could play. It'll be interesting to see if you would play though. I, I just I, I have a hard time envisioning if a couple schools bow out that John Swafford's going to be like, okay, we're still going to go and those schools aren't going to play. I wish he would. I hope he does. And that would make the most sense, but it, I have a hard time thinking that that would happen. Well, Corey, let me, let me follow up with that. If that happens, the Swafford says, no, do you think FSU, do you think Thrasher will still go ahead and try to have some kind of a season scheduling other teams? Well, but then are you, what kind of money are you getting for the TV? Like, if you're not playing an ACC season, I don't know that ESPN is going to give you 20 whatever million. Well, you, get, you can play Clemson, you can play some. UCF, you can probably do something, get a few million out of it, I would think. Yeah, no, you can get some. You can get some for sure. I, I mean, yeah, I would, be, I would be looking at every option. I'm sure these guys are. I hope it just doesn't become the easiest thing is to, is to bang it and cancel it and be done with it. I hope they really do look and explore every option. I think they will because they understand even better than we understand um, how many livelihoods are at stake, how many lives are at stake. Ira, are we are we under mes- underestimating the ACC's uh, the leadership's probably desired it to get a season on? I think 
you know, when we see Greg Sankey and we see and we hear from, you know, Greg Byrne and guys from Alabama, we, we think there's, you know, there's no way hell or high water they won't play football. But is it, is it kind of reckless to think that the ACC isn't in that same sort of lane? Yeah, no, I think I think the ACC is probably in the same boat. Uh, certainly, Commissioner Swafford, and I mean, you know, they they realize, you know, financially what's happened between the ACC and these other conferences. The idea of of uh, you know just jumping at the first chance to not play um, isn't smart on their uh, by any stretch. Is something they would want, and it's also kind of this is kind of the reality of these two conferences in terms of what their personalities are. The SEC. The SEC media days, which you've covered plenty of times, is a big fanfare. It's a big production. The coaches, are, you know, it's all formal press conferences. The ACC has their kind of quaint little ACC kickoff thing. They're just not as uh, – the ACC is usually not in front. Like as Gene said earlier, the ACC is not the, the, the conference that jumps out first on most topics. They kind of play a little bit further in the background. So, But I'm sure in terms of what they want, yeah, there's no doubt they want to play. I mean, everybody I'm sure wants to play. Um, but I think, you know, again, I just cannot imagine, you know, and you get these governors in play. We think about when there was conference expansion. Remember when, when the ACC wanted to get, um, when basically the state of Virginia, the governor basically demanded, put pressure on University of Virginia to get Virginia Tech in the ACC uh, when, when the ACC was not going to invite Virginia Tech. Uh, there, there's, these, there's these pressures from these, these states that have multiple schools from different conferences I just can't imagine, you know, the governor of Florida is going to be okay with Florida playing, but not Florida State, Miami playing, or uh, you know, some do, of these other states you, as why well. Why do you say that though? I like, what does Ron DeSantis have skin in the game if if UF has a season and Florida State just, doesn't? Do you think just political pressure from the constituents, people in the yeah. state? People in the state are not going to be happy, and he's got plenty of Florida State graduates in the state, just like he does have. Well, Miami. a lot of UCF too. That's a huge yeah. campus, and they're I mean, pretty I just, good. They're better in Florida State right now. There would be, I mean, look what's happening with sports right now. When they put the Jordan documentary on, the numbers they're getting. When you yeah. put the the numbers for the NFL draft, which was just, you know, a, a bunch of people on Zoom. Hey, hey, cannot, look what we're doing. You, you cannot yeah. let the SEC have the, just have the lay of the land in college football season. Again, it's, you know, there's a lot more important things on the line, but if they can play, if they can be playing, the ACC needs to be playing. Last question for all you guys. I know I think July 1st was kind of like a quasi date that, that some people were running with in terms of the, the sort of runway that, that presidents and athletic directors kind of have to work with to determine whether or not there'll be a football season. Uh, but it seems like with the states kind of starting to slowly reopen, I mean, I would think like by mid-June, like I would say June 15th, we'll know whether or not we're able to weather this and we can kind of move forward. I mean, would you would you take June 15th as like an over or under in terms of knowing whether or not there will be somewhat of a football season, maybe not the, the full perspective or the spectrum of what they're going to run, but I mean, by, by June 15th, do you think we'll have a pretty close to a firm idea over under Gene, if, if we're going to have a season? I'd still maybe take the over on that. I don't know. I get, I think that the fear is again, I'm, I don't know anything about how the, the science of this works, but I think the fear is that now things are reopening. How big will that next spike be? And I think they want to wait as long as possible to make that decision to see how much that, if there is going to be a spike, how much it's going to be, and if it's going to be bad enough that it will impact students on campus. Ultimately, we're not talking about, I don't think about for Florida State, whether there's going to be football, whether there's going to be students on campus. I go back to that. I say it every time. If there's students on campus, I think there's going to be some sort of football season. If students are on campus, there will not be a football season. So I think, that's when is that date when they need to make a decision whether students are going to be on campus. I still think, you know, they're going to push that off as long as possible because they want to be make the right decision. And the longer you wait, the more information you have. Corey, do you think it'll be a, a clear picture by the by mid June, or do you think it'll still be murky? First off, why not June fourteenth? That's my birthday. It's uh -huh. Flag Day. It's a holiday. Why don't you just go that? Why don't you go one day after after that? It's also President Trump's birthday, if I'm not mistaken. And Steffi Graf's. Oh, and there you go. Me bleats. Look at that. Me bleats. And, oh, yeah. and my and my sister. Okay. Yep. Wow. And my buddy's right. daughters. It, well, that, I need to put money on that. June fourteenth. <laughs> We're moving to June fourteenth. I mean, do you no, I still think I still I agree with Gene. I think it'll be over. I think it'll be in July because we just in two months from now. You there's no there's no you don't need to know mid June. I know what you're saying. Like, will we have a better idea? Yeah, but it could be not great on June fourteenth. But July fourteenth. That's that's thirty days later. It could be. We could be not smooth sailing, clear sailing, but it could be dipping uh, precipitously. 
And if that's the case, yeah, adjust. I, I just you, – you wouldn't want to cancel something June 14th and then by August 30th, you know, it's like 80 cases a day. You just wouldn't want to do you'd, – you'd be like, well, that was really dumb. So I, I think they'll stretch it out as long as possible. I think it'll be uh, – I don't even think it'll be early July. I, don't think, I think it'll be mid-July with the thought that probably that first week of games, they're all, they're all non-conference games, some are neutral site games. They might all be canceled anyway. So you're really eyeballing that second week. So I think you could even – I think you could do the middle of July. I, I won't even make you dignify my horrible line as the betters throw their tickets at me. I'll just let you have a final word uh, to kind of wrap up and button up uh, this sort of discussion. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's going to be uh, – not only do I think it's probably going to take another, you know, four, six, eight weeks or whatever to know, I think it's – everybody's just got to tr- ride these waves because it's – it's you know, last week, late last week and early, over the weekend, we had these really strong comments from the SEC commissioners and SEC – presidents who were so bullish on playing and then you know early this week you have some people kind of you know sounding not so confident and so I just think this is going to we're going to have these ebbs and flows over the next six weeks it's going to be really frustrating but again until anything final is decided decided um, I think we just kind of ride the ride the wave well, you folks, right, the, uh, the YouTube way we have going on with uh, content, we've got a war chat coming up with Gene and Corey about the 2003 Florida game with a special guest, P.K. Sam. He obviously caught the winning touchdown, 38-34 over the Gators. Take that. Uh, as well as a recruiting chat with Michael Langston, which will be live at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. You can call in, and our recruiting analyst will give you the lowdown on the recruits that are on Florida State's board. So, with that said, do stay connected to warchant.com. As always, gentlemen, thank you. Gene Williams, founder administrator, Corey Clark, senior writer and managing editor, Irish Ophel. Thanks so much for watching.